Hello ladies and gentlemen, as well as dear Swabians, welcome to The Robbers to Go. We are looking at Schiller's famous Sturm und Drang drama and today's cast are Count Maximilian von Moor and his sons Karl, the cool one with a hipster beard, and Franz, the mean one with a banker tie. Further, there's Amalia von Edelreich, Karl's fiancée, and a bunch of scruffy students who will become robbers later on. You don't have to memorize their names, you'd probably forget them anyway. We'll just keep in mind Spiegelberg, who translates literally as Mirror Mountain. Additionally, there's a couple of servants, priests, messengers, and so on. As a society, we are facing radical changes to our common values today. Parents don't know what the meaning of life is anymore, children don't know what they are rebelling against, and all of this is so absolutely novel that Schiller wrote a play about it in 1780 with The Robbers. And what is more, he wanted it to be required reading in school, so he crammed into it all the literary trends of his time. Sturm und Drang, Enlightenment, Sentimentalism. And this is how it goes. The story so far. The Moore family own a castle in Franconia. Karl, however, doesn't study in Würzburg, but in Leipzig. Ought to be done with it, really. At home, his childhood sweetheart, Amalia, is still waiting for him, although he really doesn't write very often. Also at home, Franz, who is always a bit disappointed because he's the second-born son and much more ugly than his brother. And funnily, his father always preferred the other one, who is much more sympathetic. Well, so the play can only become a tragedy, and that shows up as early as in the first scene, really, when the old count is sitting in front of the TV and his son Franz enters and goes, Hi, Dad, how's it going? Yeah, okay. Well, not for much longer. Carl's done with studying and is going to go freelance now as robber and murderer. What? And what am I supposed to do now? Well, you're going to disinherit him at first. I've prepared a letter for you, you just sign it. And the old count does that and exits really weighed down with sorrow. And Franz goes, yes. Karl, by contrast, occurs for the first time in the play where students usually occur, namely in the pub. There he's sitting and ranting about enlightenment and his century and all that nonsense, saying, I'm so sturm und drang, I want to go out and Spiegelberg prompts him and start a band of robbers. And Karl goes, what? No, why would I want to do that? I'm going home now. I'm going to marry Amalia and move into my very own castle. And enter another student. You've got mail. And uh, Karl thinks this is his ticket home and reads it and gets pale all of a sudden and goes, I'm disinherited. Oh my God jumps onto the table. I've got a brilliant idea. Let's start a band of robbers. Are you in? And all of them go, uh, aye, comrade leader. That's Saxony for you. All of this is remarkable because Schiller himself had to break free from social convention shortly after having written The Robbers. He had to run away from home and become an outlaw in order to be able to work as a writer. In the castle, Amalia is doing her Amalia thing, namely, I'm so sentimental and in love with Karl. And Franz enters and goes, um, Karl being disinherited now, just piss off, will you? And Franz is indeed pissed off now, disappointed and emotionally abused. You, you can imagine. So it's only natural that now he's planning the perfect murder of his father. In order to do so, he's had a village full dress up as a messenger who marches up to the Count, Amalia and Franz, saying... I'm a messenger and my message is Karl is dead. And Amalia goes, no, that's impossible. And his last sigh was Amalia. And she, yeah, well, and in that case, it's probably true. In addition, he put you, his fiancée, under the protection of his loving brother Franz. Pull the other one. And she exits and the messenger as well. And the old count, oh, that's too much for me. I'm dying. And Franz, dead, dead at last. I'm not dead yet. You just shut up now, will you? You are going into a retirement home. That's the best solution for everyone, and I'll be the boss of the castle. The old count is locked up. In the forest, meanwhile, we are getting to know the hard everyday life of robbers. Spiegelberg is talking to another robber. So what have you been up to all day? Ah, well, we've raided a nunnery and looked after the nuns, and the boss enters. What's up here? Oh, no, nothing, really, nothing. And then a priest enters, saying, Hello, gentlemen, my name is Moser, and you are godless, and uh, surrounded by a tenfold number of armed security forces. I am here to accept your capitulation. Today's special is an amnesty for everyone, just the chief is going to be executed, okay? And Karl thinks for a while and says then, Okay, then, I'll be executed now. And he hesitates, and finally the robbers go, no, save the chief, and they massacre all the armed security forces around, surrounding them. 
At home in the castles, Amalia is surprisingly occupied by being in love with Karl and Franz comes in saying, uh, Amalia, but uh, Karl is dead now, why don't you marry me? But I'm forcing you. You just forget it. And she exits. And poor Franz is really to be pitied. In the forest, Karl is being sentimental and melancholy too now, like Amalia, listening to a little Johnny Cash courtesy of violence mirth, when a newbie enters, saying, uh, Mr. Moore, uh, yeah? My name is Kuzinski, and I'm here for the job advert in which you were looking for robbers and murderers. What's your qualification? Well, uh, first I'm unhappily in love, and second I've been cheated out of my heritage. Aha, and what's your fiancé called? Amalia. No! And Karl is out of his mind because of his own memories and says, uh, I'm going on my annual holiday, guys, you stay right here, and off he hops. And in a jiffy, he arrives at his father's castle, meeting Amalia, who goes, Karl! And he replies, no, uh, my name is von Brandt, I just look like Karl. But I'm so in love with Karl. Why don't we have a little chat about that? And they go off. And Franz has naturally witnessed this, and goes, von Brandt? Bullshit, this is Karl, I need to kill him. Servant! Daniel! And old Daniel enters. And Franz commands, uh, you are to kill von Brandt guy. This von Brandt guy immediately, what? Yes, you kill him, or else uh, you'll regret it. And exit Franz, and Daniel goes, I'll not do this, Count von Brandt. And he comes in, um, I'll not kill you, and apart from that, you are Karl, and your brother's to blame. What? My brother's to blame? In that case, I'll go for now. Uh, after a little sing-along to the lute with Amalia. And he goes to have a little sing-along to the lute with Amalia. In the forest, the robbers have assembled around a camping fire in the meantime, having a chat, roasting marshmallows, conspiring against the robber chief, which is why Spiegelberg is killed. And then uh, Karl comes back. What's up here? Uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, when suddenly a stranger walks in, shouting, uh, Pizza for the allegedly late ex-count von Moore. And uh, surprisingly, there's a reply from the background. Yes, I'm here. And Karl goes, what? My father's alive? Who kept him prisoner here? Uh, well, that was your brother. What? Uh, robbers, go and arrest Franz. And they clear off the clearing like lightning. And in the castle we see Franz. Oops, it's the fifth act already and this is a tragedy. I'm getting slightly nervous. Is there a priest in the house? And a priest comes in and Franz uh, goes, um, I only believe in reason because I'm enlightened and God doesn't really exist. And the priest goes, yes, he does exist. And Franz, no, he doesn't. Show off, will you? And the priest exits and then the old servant Daniel comes in. Uh, Franz, there's two robber smurfs who are going to get you and apart from that Amalia has run away. And in the background we already see the robbers marauding in the castle and singing Johnny Cash and Franz uh, is terrified and goes, in that case I'm killing myself now, which he does. The robbers, however, are so stunned and disappointed that they haven't got him alive that one of them actually commits suicide too and the other one sets the castle on fire. In the forest, the person formerly known as the Count von Moor has been treated very generously and hospitably by the robbers. He still doesn't realize, however, that the robber chief is actually his son. And the old Count goes, Ach, if my son were here... When Amalia comes running after having snuck out of the castle, recognizes Karl and goes, Karl, finally! And the Count of Moor, My son is the chief robber? I'm dying. Really? Yeah, this time for real. And boom, he's dead. And Karl goes, shit, but at least I've got Amalia back. And as he tries to embrace her, a robber steps forward saying, excuse me, we don't play with girls, they can't be in the gang. What? Says who? Oh, well, you said that yourself, actually, and it's in the constitution. And bang, he shoots her and is very disappointed. Someone had to be weeping, didn't they? I'm fed up with playing robbers with you now. I'll turn myself into the police. And so Lord and justice run their course and all of the Moore family are dead. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was The Robbers by Friedrich Schiller. Vielen Dank.